Hello everyone! In the previous video, we talked about things you should do to learn programming. Learning can be painful, at times. Other times, it's extremely painful. It requires focus and discipline and quite often doesn't bring desired results as quickly as we want. So, in this video, we'd like to give you a few tips that might help you learn new stuff more effectively and efficiently. We will start with the more general tips and then move on to the more specific ones. So, here we go! Number 1. Plan effort, not result. Everybody knows that to be effective and efficient, we need to plan, set goals, set vision and stuff, but what we sometimes tend to do is we say something like, in one year I'll be good enough at programming to create my own super duper mobile game. Sounds like a good goal, right? Wrong. Well, there is a problem with such goals. See, planning works when we know how to achieve our goal, and quite often we don't. I mean, learning is a journey into an unknown, which implies that we'll be dealing with something new. And because it's unknown, at the start, we have no idea what can go wrong and derail our plans. When you tell yourself that after a certain period of time you'll be able to do this and that, and it doesn't happen, your unfulfilled expectations might demoralize you. You might get a feeling that this is just not your cup of tea, that you're not smart enough for this stuff and that you should be spending your time on something else. That could be true, but it could just as well be false. You might simply need a bit more time than you initially gave yourself. Now, instead of planning the result, plan your learning process. While you cannot be 100% sure that you'll get to a certain point in a certain amount of time, you can and in fact should plan the steps you need to take to get there. So instead of telling yourself that in a year you'll be able to create a super duper game, tell yourself that by the next week you will have completed one chapter of the book, or one video tutorial, or whatever you're using for learning. It is important that you do not plan too much ahead. A week or two is just fine, otherwise at some point during the multi-month learning journey you might get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work still remaining and give up. Number 2. Be a teacher, not a student. Did you raise an eyebrow? Well, before you raise the other one, let me explain. Books, video lessons, even human teachers can't teach you anything, not just programming. Wait, before you call me absolutely insane, let me elaborate. Only you can teach yourself. Because only you have direct access to your own brain, it is you, or your conscious self, that can teach the other part of your brain a new concept or a new skill. Of course, this is a play pretend, but it might work for you. Taking up the role of a teacher for your own brain serves two purposes. First, we're all unique and because of that we all learn differently. What works for some might not work for others. Sometimes all it takes is a slight change in wording or a slightly different analogy to significantly improve your understanding of the subject. So since you know better what works for you, by taking up the role of a teacher for your own brain, you can find a better way to learn, something that might work exclusively for you. Secondly, by pretending to be a teacher for your own brain, whenever you get stuck, instead of blaming yourself for being stupid, you can blame your student, your brain. Yes, it's just a mind trick and reeks of severe denial, but it might help you overcome frustration that quite often becomes one of the most faithful companions in the journey towards learning something new. In addition, be a good teacher. Good teachers are patient with their students. Don't be too harsh on yourself because, remember, learning is painful. Number 3. Keep going, not skipping. We've seen two types of learners. Those who refuse to move on unless they fully understand the current material, and those who tend to skip things they don't get. While in extremes, either approach might seriously slow you down, a good balance between the two can make your learning more effective. I will give you some more detailed advice on this later in this video, and for now, let me repeat. It is important that you do your best to understand as much as possible from the material that you're using. But it is equally important that you move on when you get totally stuck and come back to it later. Learning is never a straight path, so you should be mentally prepared to revisit the same topics time to time. So these are the general tips. Plan effort, not result. Be a teacher, not a student. Keep going, not skipping. And we're now moving on to the more specific tips. And we will use the Tetris project that we made earlier in this channel as an example to show you how the general tips that we just mentioned work in practice. Even if it's the first time you ever hear about the Tetris project, you might still find the tips you're about to hear helpful, so stay with me. There's something I'd like to emphasize before I move on though. The main objective of the Tetris project that we'll use in this video is not to show you how to make a Tetris game. Not at all. 
The main goal is to help you learn some important concepts and skills that will help you make your own programs. Tetris is just a practical example that we use to help you learn. With that said, let's get back on track. And we're going to start off with planning your learning process. If you look at the Tetris series in our channel, you will see that it consists of 10 episodes. 9 episodes with actual work, plus an extra episode for summary and wrap up. The total duration of the series is about 3.5 hours. While it might seem doable to complete the entire series in one sitting, it might just be a bit too much to swallow and digest all at once. Please keep in mind that 3 hours of video is most likely going to take more or even way more than 3 hours of your time, especially if you are not very experienced in programming. Remember, we are not making a Tetris game, we are learning programming and learning is a journey into an unknown which might take any amount of time. We recommend that you start off by completing one episode in two or three days depending on the duration of the episode. If you can do more, do more. If it's too much, do less. Find a pacing that works for you. Needless to say, planning without following through is not going to do much. To learn efficiently, you should commit to do a certain amount of work in a certain period of time and make honest effort to achieve that. Meaning you need to be at your desk, paying your undivided attention to the learning material without straying away to check out some memes, inspect your fridge, or burn your couch. Next, be a teacher, not a student. As a student, we tend to take a more passive approach to learning by entrusting our learning success to the teacher, be it an actual human teacher or the author of the learning material that we use. We tend to believe that it's somebody else's job to pump knowledge into our brains. Unfortunately, it's not really so. Teachers, even the greatest ones, cannot wire their brains directly to yours and upload the knowledge. They can only offer information, put it on the table in a digestible format, but it's your responsibility to reach out, take the information and turn it into knowledge and skills by incorporating it into your existing knowledge. This is why it is important to plan active role of a teacher for yourself. Take the information from the table, and if it's not digestible enough, adjust it to make it easier for the ultimate student, your brain, to consume it. For example, in one of the videos of the Tetris series, we say that a thread is similar to a car lane. If this analogy doesn't help you understand the concept of multi-threading, try to find a different analogy that works better for you. We all have some pre-existing knowledge. And quite often we don't understand new stuff because we can't see how this new piece of information fits in what we already know. What you can do as a teacher for your brain is you can identify the parts of the new piece of information that do not resonate with the already existing knowledge and experiences of yours. How? By asking questions. For example, why do we need multithreading? What problems does it solve? Is it the only solution to the problem? If not, what are the other solutions? How are they different from one another? Quite often, however, it all boils down to two questions. Why do I need this and how do I use it? Identifying the questions, however, is just a half of it. As a teacher for your brain, it is ultimately your job to find the answers, or rather to reshape the answers so that they resonate with your existing knowledge. To help yourself formulate the questions and find the answers, do it on paper. Taking notes by hand is crucial for effective learning. You can think an entire sentence while writing down the first word, meaning handwriting slows you down slows your brain down, allowing you to process new information more deeply, which in turn helps you learn better. Here's an important thing related to note-taking though. Do not just copy word for word whatever you hear or read. Paraphrase. Draw diagrams to visualize the stuff that you're learning. This should help your brain accommodate the new information and turn it into knowledge. Now, if no matter what, you don't want to write down your thought process, there is another option. Instead of writing down your thoughts, you can think aloud. You can also get up from your desk and pace back and forth while talking. The idea is the same as with handwriting. By thinking aloud, you let your brain slow down and process new information more carefully. The drawback of this approach, though, is that if you just talk without writing down your thoughts at all, you might quickly forget what you said a moment ago. So you might want to combine thinking aloud with writing down important ideas that will help you get back on track in case you lose your train of thought. Next, be a nice and patient teacher for yourself or simply be nice to yourself because learning can be painful and frustration is likely to come along. You might get this nasty feeling that you're just not smart enough to learn programming, especially when you see others get things faster and seemingly easier than you. And when something like this happens, it's hard to stay motivated and keep going. Here's the thing. If you're new to computer science and programming, 
and you just can't wrap your head around a basic concept, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're dumb. It might be because you're just too unfamiliar with the stuff related to programming. Our brain is a lazy lump of fat. It doesn't want to deal with unfamiliar things. And perhaps the only way to make it learn new stuff is to make it less unfamiliar by continuously exposing your brain to that new stuff. In other words, you need to train your brain so that it becomes more familiar with programming related stuff, and this takes time. Some people need more time, some people less. Learning is like climbing a mountain where every single step requires effort. Don't look at the top of the mountain too often. Instead, every time you get frustrated and feel like giving up, look back. Look at the path you've cleared. Look at the old self who didn't know what your current self now does. There might be days when you just don't get anything. You stare at a book page or your screen without any clear idea as to what you're looking at. That's not a problem either. You might be just having a bad day, and what you need to do is get up from your desk and take a break. Sometimes all it takes is a short time out to recharge. A good and timely break is as important as a good exercise. And learning is an exercise for your brain. Once again, pacing is important. To learn effectively and efficiently, you shouldn't be moving too fast because you will end up missing important stuff. Nor should you be moving too slowly. As a teacher for your brain, it's ultimately your job to find the right pacing. But pacing is just about how much of content you cover in a period of time. The next question is, how do you cover that content? What exactly do you do? Since programming is a skill, it requires practice. A lot of it. And here's our suggestion. If you tend to skip things you don't understand, then make an express run through the material first. And then, go back to the beginning and go through the entire material again, but slower. Paying more attention to details and actually trying to understand the things you skipped during the initial run. And finally, solidify your knowledge by making a third run to pick up what you skipped in the previous one. For example, if you choose the Tetris series in our channel as your learning material, go through the entire series and try to get a working Tetris program first. Having a complete piece of work might give you additional motivation to continue learning, which is of course fantastic, but there is a pitfall that you should be aware of. Once you've completed the video tutorial, you might feel like moving on to something even more exciting instead of doing the boring work of making the same program again and again. The point of learning programming is not to make a program, but to know how to make it. And if you rush through a video tutorial treating it as a recipe without proper understanding of how the program you made works, I hate to say that, but you haven't learned much. And quite likely, you won't be able to make a similar program on your own, which isn't cool, right? Yeah, right. Do you expect me to say... Wrong. I mean, it's not really cool to say something like, Hey, check it out, I made a cool program, but I don't remember how I did it. Lol. So if you tend to skip things you don't get, do make sure you come back to those things later. The other approach is for those who tend to get stuck when they bump into something they don't understand and refuse to move on. If that's you, this is what you can do. Instead of completing the entire video series first, do three runs of the same episode. It might be challenging for you, but we do recommend that during the first run, you do treat the video tutorial as a recipe that you just need to follow without proper understanding as to why the things are the way they are. If no matter what, you just can't skip the thing that you don't get at the moment, and if you refuse to treat it as a recipe, well, think about this. How many things are there that you use every day without understanding how they work? I'm sure there's a lot. For example, do you know how this video that you're watching now is being delivered to you? Do you know how the internet works? Do you know what happens when you open a video on YouTube? If you do, well, that's cool. But the point is that you don't need to know how the internet works in order to use it. Now, during the second run, you can let yourself get stuck a bit trying to understand how the things work, but don't get too passionate about it. Some students love to dig deep in the early stages of learning and they refuse to move on until they get a full understanding of the current material. There is nothing wrong with this, this is just how you are, this is just how your brain works. However, sometimes you just need to move on past the thing you don't get at the moment. For example, one of the first things that we have to deal with when we start learning Java is main method, which looks like this. What is this? Main method is an entry point to a Java program. The program must have at least one main method, and this is all you need to know at first. Don't try to understand every single part of this line of code. You don't need to. Remember, quite often we don't understand new stuff because we can't see how this new piece of information fits into what we already know. 
which means that once we've learned something new and expanded our network of knowledge, it might become easier to fit in what we couldn't before. So when you encounter something that you just can't understand during the second run, just think of it as magic beyond human understanding and move on. And during the third run, you can get stuck all you want and dissect every single line of code to your heart's content. Now, regardless of the approach you take, we recommend that you actually make the Tetris program three times. Create three different projects and that beans the IDE that we're using in the Tetris video series. The first project is for the initial run, when you just follow the instructions in the video. The second project is for more independent work, where you try to repeat the steps but refer to the video tutorial as little as possible. And in the third project, you do the entire thing on your own without checking with the video. And this is what you can do to learn better. On the screen, you can see the check left method that we wrote for the game area class while working on the Tetris project. The job of the method is to check whether the Tetris block can move left. During the first run, you just copy the code. You do try to understand how it works, but don't get stuck for too long. During the second run, you write comments that explain every line of code that you write. Just like with taking notes, it is important that you write comments in your own words. Don't just copy the explanation you hear in the video. It might not help you much. Then, you erase the code. And try to reconstruct it using your comments. And during the third run, instead of writing comments for every line of code, you write one more general comment for the entire method. And try to write the method from scratch using that comment. The purpose of this kind of training is to help you become more familiar with translating verbal solutions into programming language. Because remember, programming is not really about writing code. It's about finding solutions to problems and translating those solutions into a programming language. Also, you should remember that it's important that you don't memorize the code, because that's largely useless. Instead of focusing on the code, focus on the solution that the code implements. Finally, to learn better, you should explore. When making a program using a tutorial, don't just copy the code. Play with it. Ask yourself what-if questions. Experiment and see what happens. Code is not a piece of art that you mustn't touch. Experiment with the code to become more familiar with it. For example, what if, instead of returning false here and here, I have the method return true? Well, if I do that, then I should also change this true to false. Otherwise, the method will always return true no matter what, which kind of makes it a useless piece of code. But with this change, the method returns true when the block must not move left. So if I don't want to break the program, I should change the code that calls the check left method so that the block doesn't move left when the check left method returns true. Lastly, there is one more advice that is related to the be a teacher not a student part, but I'd like to mention it here to give it a somewhat stronger emphasis. Do you see this text? I'm sure you can read it and understand what it means even though it's misspelled. Why? Because of how our brain works. Remember, our brain is a lazy fat ass that sometimes portrays things somewhat incorrectly because it's just too much work checking for small details. And if we trust our brain too much without double checking for new details, we risk missing something important. So to be an effective learner, you should not trust your brain completely. Instead of labeling something that you hear as I've seen this before, or this is obvious, keep your mind open and look for smaller details that might be there because they might make a huge difference. Alright, so these are the tips that we believe will help you learn programming or anything else more effectively and efficiently. Plan effort, not result. Be a teacher, not a student. Keep going, not skipping. Lastly, let me repeat. Learning new stuff is not easy. What's easy is giving up and not doing anything, but we're not looking for easy ways, are we? Learning is a journey, and journeys are meant to be fun, so go have fun. Bye.